Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep Number 7003 I think it's 114 I think I'm kind of interested just to see how long I can keep it up. Just wondering, like 20 years' time, if I'm still doing this, if I'm still doing these, let me bore you to sleep recordings and videos. Can you imagine how many will I have done? Oh, by the way, only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes because it might just get really bored and want to close your eyes. And so don't operate any heavy machinery. So if you're operating a crane, you know, a big massive crane on a docks, you know, unloading containers from a ship that maybe don't listen to me during work hours. Um, yeah, so, so many years, I'm trying to think, 20 years time, Let's say I do Let's say I did five a week Let's be generous Let's say four a week I'll probably do more than that But let's say I do four a week Sometimes I do them every day Sometimes I don't Sometimes I do them every two days Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'll do them every three days. Sometimes I don't. So, you know, it depends. But let's say I do four in a week. So that would be four. So 52 times by two would be a hundred and Four, so two hundred and eight. Yeah, two hundred and eight sessions a year times by twenty. So it's two hundred and eight to two thousand and eighty. Four thousand. Two thousand. <laughs> Two thousand eighty, four thousand one hundred and sixty, I think. This is four thousand one hundred and sixty. Wow. Well, uh, I'm going to lay back. Just if I'd let you know that. Turn my glasses off, have a quick drink. Oh. Oh. The main reason I don't normally lay back in my big black squeaky chair is precisely because of the squeakiness of the occasion. Because now, at the end of this recording, I'm 
going to have to push forward so that my chair is upright which will cause a lot of squeakiness which isn't great it's not so bad for I've already said goodbye and left it a few seconds and then got up and I can just edit the squeakiness out at the end of the recording but what happens if I push the chair up you know say goodbye push a chair up and it's only 32 minutes in do you see what I mean it's uh, quite hard to know sort of where I am with the time span because I don't like to go over an hour if I do go over an hour maybe I don't mind going over by a minute or maybe two minutes sometimes three minutes maybe four maybe even five minutes there's been a few occasions where I have gone over. I don't think I've really gone much more than 10 minutes over the hour. Although I do have this memory in my brain. I don't know why, but it's an hour and 12 minutes. So that might be true. I might have just made it up so I did a recording yesterday uh, still got a bit of a weird it's been a weird day I've spent a quite a bit of the day asleep but I've been looking after my neighbour's dog and the dog's a big heavy dog if you, if he's when he treads on my foot it feels like an adult you know gorilla is treading tre so it's heavy he's heavy very very heavy I've never been trodden on by a gorilla so it's a guess I imagine the gorilla would be a lot heavier and I would be saying, you know, that's nothing like a dog. It's nothing, nothing like a dog. I can't believe I used to say that. And uh, then I'd hear people in the background saying, keep quiet, don't make any sudden movements. Why did you jump over the fence? The fence is there to protect the people in the zoo from the wild animals. Why did you jump over it? Just keep still. The gorilla's never hurt anybody before, but... You know, you never know. Stop tickling the gorilla. Leave his nipples alone. Oh no, I can't believe he's doing that. So yeah, it's uh, very heavy. It's a big old, big, big old dog. He's just like muscle, everything. Everything about him is just strong. And Andre bullies him. Andre chases him around and bites the back of his ankles and his feet, you know, his, you know, his legs. So I have to separate them. Because Andre's constantly, he, he runs at him and the dog runs away, yelping. And because Andre's much quicker and more agile and tinier, you know, can get in and out of places and On, on some level it's funny you know it's like that's my boy that is he's taken on a giant because but the thing is the dog is a beautiful dog and he's very gentle you know you'd 
you'd want him on your side in a situation where you'd need protection because it's definitely that kind of dog that would protect you but at the same side he's gentle as anything he's just soft and loving so I don't you know, I kind of don't like seeing Andre treating like that um, but I think what it is is Andre is very territorial this home is his home you know I'm his lodger basically and he doesn't like it when he can't do whatever he wants to do whenever he wants to do it he's I basically raised a spoiled little brat I think but I find it funny I don't know why I find him funny this the way he he does his patrols of the rooms goes into the kitchen searches around checks that there's nothing in there then he goes into the bathroom and will actually open the bathroom door if it's closed to go in just to check there's no one in there he'll go into the bedroom he'll go up to the front door sniff sniff at the bottom of the front door make sure there's no one out there then he'll come into the living room and just look around and just do his little patrol go underneath the chair go around the television underneath the table it's just he's got his little ways that you know sometimes jumping onto me while I'm on the chair is part of his patrol he'll climb up my leg lick my face see what's on the table see if there's anything that he can steal any bits of food that he can take or anything that he can knock off onto the floor because he loves to do that and then he jumps off again and now that the dog's gone because the dog's been picked up about an hour ago Andre because I had to keep him in the cage I let him out when I could but I've, I've had to keep him in the cage most of the day and as soon as I let him out of the cage happy as anything he checked all the rooms <laughs> just to make sure and he had his dinner and I was resting and a big sleep he's hiding behind the, the, live, the living room door it's got an old coat of mine it's on there and he's sleeping on the coat he's happy as anything So I think he, he likes having people come here, but he likes to bite them. He doesn't bite me, apart from my toes. And I can control him to a little, you know, if I say to him gentle, he backs off, you know, with, with the dog and stuff. But with the dog's owner, my friend, Andre bites him on his hand. Like proper goes for it yet he never does it with anybody else outside of the house it's only when he's here inside my home or his home when we're out the amount of people including kids even that have stroked him and he doesn't bite he didn't have a little nibble but he's never bitten anybody but he has bitten a couple of dogs He had a full on fire of a dog once, and that was very quick, and I didn't realise it was happening. And it was surprising because we were in the park, and him and this, that, a dog got on really well. Just like um, Andre was behaving himself, and the dog was licking Andre, and they got on really well, and I thought, this is brilliant. So I'm walking back, this is probably over a year ago. I'm walking back to my home and we see the same dog. They've just walked around a different way. So I just automatically let Andre go and say hello. Andre ran it and went for him, went to buy him. And he ended up inside the dog's mouth. 
the dog bit him. I got, you know, grabbed him. So I put my hand inside the dog's mouth. It was just a natural thing to do and pulled the dog's mouth open and removed Andre. And Andre was just wet and covered in, you know, just wet. He wasn't injured. I didn't know. I just had to sort of check him over. But Andre was going... He does that when he's angry. He also does it when he's horny as well, which is a bit weird, but he does it when he's angry. He was shaking. He wasn't scared. He was just really angry. It's like, and the the owner of the dog was apologising. I said, "No, he's, you know, Andre attacked the dog." So now I have to keep him away from every single dog. It's not so much I'm worried about the dog. I'm worried about Andre attacking the dog. Weird. He's, he's a funny little thing. He's like a bit like, do you remember Scrappy Doo from uh, Scooby Doo? It was in the later years of Scooby Doo. It's, uh, I imagine Scooby Doo purists didn't like the idea of introducing a new character, especially one that kind of competed with the main character of the show you know it was named Scooby Doo for me really the the main character of that show was Scooby Doo and Shaggy because the rest of them you know the, the, the tall like the one in charge was the blonde one you had the one with the glasses, the girl with the glasses. I'm sure there was, I'm sure there was someone else, but I don't remember who it was. But then there was Shaggy and Scooby, and Scooby and Shaggy were always together, weren't they? Getting scared and running away, and you know all that stuff. And the other people, they were just like part. They were like extras, really, in the show. So I do wonder how the characters felt when they got told, by the way, we're going to introduce another person to the Scooby-Doo show. I think Scooby, Shaggy probably said, who is it? That's my impression of him. And Scooby probably says, "Uh uh That's my Scooby impression. And um, I said, oh, we've got this new character called Scrappy-Doo. Scrappy-Doo. What's that all about? Well, he's Scooby-Doo's cousin, I think, or nephew. He's related to Scooby-Doo, hence the do part. But his name isn't Scooby, it's Scrappy. Why is his name Scrappy? Ah, I get this. You know how Scooby-Doo is always running away from everything. Always scared, always absolutely petrified of his own farts. Yeah. Well, Scrappy-Doo is the exact opposite. I mean, he likes his own farts. No, it's not about farts. You're not getting the point. It's scrappy do. What does scrap scrappy mean? Scrap. Well, it's kind of rubbish, isn't it? Stuff that you don't want anymore. You send it to the scrap heap. Oh, this is going to be harder than I thought. Okay, uh, scra- scrappy do scrappy as in fighting. Oh, you do know this is a children's program, don't you? 
Yeah, but it hasn't stopped you introducing paranormal stuff. I mean, you know, ghosts and vampires and werewolves and Frankenstein and all that stuff. Murders and kidnappings. That's that's like X-rated stuff, isn't it? But animate it and it's all right. Oh, I didn't need a sociology uh, lecture. No, I was just saying, just... No, Scrappy is uh, is brave. He's he's not scared of the character that we all know isn't a monster or a ghost or anything like that. Even my chair's angry. What do you mean, a character you know isn't? We, we all know, don't we? I don't think the audience know. Thanks, Andre, for making all that. S- I try not to say the word noise, use the word sound. I'm going to move the chair up, so bear with me. You ready? Pretend it's an ASMR sound. Pretend you're getting tingles. You know, you're getting very lazy with these uh, sessions. Not making much effort, are you? Leave me alone. Okay. So Scrappy Doo is going to be a new character. He's not scared. And not only is he not scared, he's forcefully wanting to um, confront, let's say confront, use that word, the spectre or, you know, the... The baddie. The baddie. Oh, okay. That's, that's interesting. So how popular do you think this character will be? Well, the problem is, I think he'll be popular because he's funny. And um, we've got a few little catchphrases we're going to use. We're not which one, we don't know which ones will become popular, but we've got a few, a few that we're going to going to try out and just see um thing is at the moment because we don't have the internet at the moment because it's not been invented so we're going to have to just sort of get some feedback from some of the comics and the magazines and maybe newspapers and stuff you know the kids kids tv programs so because i imagine they'll be repeating some of the phrases that he says because he's going to be able to speak uh english he won't have because Scooby Doo doesn't speak, does he? He just goes. Rrr, rrr, rrr. Scrappy Doo will actually be able to speak. Well, how come he can speak and Scooby Doo can't? Well, if Scooby Doo could speak, we wouldn't need um, Shaggy, would we? That's another thing, Shaggy, isn't that a bit of a rude word I don't know I don't think Shaggy was rude back then in them days I'm going to have a shag I think shag was like a carpet that you had it was also a a type of tobacco so yeah it wasn't a rude word don't know how it became a rude word I don't care (laughs) So it's like, oh, okay. So what phrases are you going to use for Scrappy-Doo to, you know, test? Well, we've thought of a few. Uh, I've got Herbert here who can tell you them. Herbert, you want to introduce yourself? Mm, Yes, my name's Herbert. Okay, Herbert, if you'd like to just... 
tell everyone what, what you think some of the phrases that we're going to introduce to the new Scooby-Doo. We, I think we're going to call it the new Scooby-Doo show. We, we might call it Scooby and Scrappy-Doo. Depends, really. Yeah, okay, okay. They didn't, yeah. Okay, so what uh, phrase have you got? Well, first of all, let me say... Mm, mm, uh, do, you, do you want to punch up? Do you want to punch up? That's one of them. That's one of them. And another one. Uh, stop doing that while I eat your kebab. That's that's another one. That's another one. And baps all round because baps are round. Pop monster aren't. That's another one. That's it. Can, can I stop? Can I stop you there? Baps, what's Baps got to do with, what, I don't know, I'm just giving you some of the ideas, some of the ideas. Now, uh, another one is, let me do him, let me do him. Another one is, let me punch him, let me punch him. Okay, all right, any others? Yeah, I don't think this is this is one of the ones we're not sure. This is one of the ones we're not sure if we're gonna if we're gonna really uh, do do or not not. So um, let me at him is one. Let him let me at him. Ah, oh, let me at him. So they're all kind of in the same kind of confronta- confrontational manner rhythms about them but you know am I, am I correct yes yes I, I would say so say so and uh, yeah I suppose it could work I've got this great idea what we could do is whenever he says it so I don't know for example you know he said to uh, let me I'm gonna, I'm gonna lick your kebab or whatever it is you know that you said earlier, and you could hold on to his head, like Scrappy Doo or uh, Scooby Doo could hold on to his head and just push his head down, and his legs could be running, but he doesn't get anywhere because his head's been pushed down, because that's what happens in real life, isn't it? You know, so, so I saw this, I saw this in a cinema once. Uh, someone was trying to run out of the cinema. It was a kid and a parent put their head down and put their hand on to the head of the child, and the kid's legs was just running like wore a big hole in the carpet. It was like yeah, it was sparks and everything. I, I'm not sure if that's true. Not true, is it? Is it? No, but just the point is, you, you could have that in the cartoon. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. Yes. So yes, that's kind of how Scrappy Doo came in, and uh, that wasted a few minutes. I've looked after quite a few dogs over the years. I used to. Not Scooby Doo, obviously. But I think there's a, there's a bit of a disappointment for me when I got my first dog. It was a what was it? What was those big, fat, massive, huge dogs? One of the world's biggest dogs, and they used to have them in adverts and it advertise brandy and they did have a like a a wooden thing on a chain like a barrel like a little barrel of brandy and they'd rescue someone in the snow uh, St Bernard's or you may call them St Bernard's but you're incorrect they're St Bernard's and 
we got one of those. It's, I think it was in 1984, or 1985, probably 1985. And for some reason, it seemed like a good idea to get the biggest dog in the world. And yeah, that was a really, really great idea. And um, I wasn't. And because I'd spent my, I, say, I hadn't spent my entire life watching cartoons and programs about dogs because I've never really been that interested in dogs, uh, although they are they are lovely. Um, but. So are chocolate eclairs, but I don't want to watch documentaries on them. Chocolate eclair rescue? <laughs> no. It's a. Uh, I was a bit disappointed when we got our dog, because the thing is, all dogs are little to begin with, and this dog was no different. It was the size you could fit it into your hands. Actually, to be fair, he did need two hands, but it was the cutest little thing in the world. All, every single puppy is just the cutest. They're just, I think they're just beautiful little things. And so, you know, we all fell in love with her. Her name is Misty. And... I go to bed and she'd she'd like literally grow about a foot every every night time. But it's a disappointment because I was I grew up. I don't know if the shows are on television anymore, but I grew up on things like Lassie and like Disney Disney movies where there was animals. Like traveling across Alaska, and there'd be a voiceover of someone talking about stuff, you know, uh, like being the voices of the animals. Say, so, yeah, so now they're they're still walking across Alaska, and Bobby is hungry, and they're still walking, and then a grizzly bear came along and. Bobby keeps his distance from a grizzly bear, but for some reason, Tallywazzle is confronting the bear. But the bear, called Horace, doesn't understand. Doesn't really understand, has never seen a, a dog before. And Tallywazzle has never seen a bear before. So there's a lot of confusion all around and now Polly Pooly Pong is Polly Pulley Tong is run, running up behind Horace. And Horace looked around, not sure what to do. And then Pandy Wandy, who is Horace's daughter, came up. And said, Daddy, 
Yes, Pandy Wendy. It says, uh, what are these animals? What are they? Are they dinner? And Horace says, no, my child, they're not dinner, not today. Why is that, Daddy? He said, if you, if you look over there, can't you see those cameras? Yes, we're being filmed. Big Brother is watching. We better be real careful what we do. She said, Daddy. Yes, Polly Wally. Do you know the names of any of these dogs? And if so, could you repeat them and tell me all of the names? No, I don't know the names. Therefore, I can't repeat them to you. Daddy? Yes, Polly Wally. Is it okay if I ask them their names? No, it is not. But why, Daddy? Because I have spoken. And my word is gold. My word is king in these lands. I have not spent all these years building up this territory to be questioned by you in front of these underlings. Now let us move on forward with our lives and forget this ever happened. But Daddy, I am no longer answering questions. Please leave a message after the tone. <laughs> Was that supposed to be a roar of a bear? It was a roar of a bear. It was the roar of a mighty bear. The mightiest bear that ever lived in these magical kingdoms we call Horace Land. So how come you answered me if you're not there? <sighs> Clearly you can see I am here. I'm standing in front of you. Oh. That explains it then. Can we go now? Yes, I think we shall. What did you mean when you said shall? Did you mean shall? Yes, of course, my child. Why didn't you just say shall then? Well, the reason I said shall, I said shall, is because I was trying to be pretentious. Oh, oh, that explains a lot. Daddy? Yes, my child. What does pretentious mean? I'll tell you on the way back to our glorious kingdom. Okay then. Can we go to McDonald's on the way home? No. Oh, 
Please, can we go to McDonald's on the way home? No. Oh, I want to go to McDonald's. No. Oh, McDonald's, 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 McDonald's. I want to go to McDonald's. I want to go to McDonald's. I'm going to keep singing this song. I'm going to keep singing this song. McDonald's. McDonald's. I want to go to McDonald's. I want to eat. I want to eat. I want to eat a McDonald's burger. I want to eat. I want to eat. I want to eat some fries as well. I want to get home. I want to get home. I'm going to do something that I enjoy even more than eating them. I'm going to poo. I'm going to poo. All the burger and the fries in the well. It, what did you say? I said, I want to go to McDonald's. No. The last bit about pooing in the well. Yeah, pooing, pooing the McDonald's out. It's, this is more fun than eating it. It doesn't taste that good. But pooing it out, it feels lovely. What is your voice changing? I don't know. I've forgotten, <laughs> I've forgotten what the voice was like when we first started this. Oh, I see. You're trying to sound like Aslam, aren't you? From, from Wicked Witch in the Wardrobes. I am not my child. Anyway, don't try to distract me. You're talking about pooing in the well. Yes. We all do it, don't we? Now that well is where we get our water from. That's where we drink our water. Oh. Daddy... Yes. If I told you that I was just making it up about pooing in the well, would you believe me? Uh, to be honest, I now have to build another well. I can't stop thinking about it. We might have to move. What, just because of that? Yeah, just because of that. I have to find another place that has a well and just hope that they don't have a child that poos in the well. So basically you have just disrupted our life hugely. Daddy? Yes. Does that mean that we can still go to McDonald's? What? I want to go to McDonald's. I really want to go. I just want to go because I just feel so happy when I think about it. It makes me so happy. I just want to go and have all that sugar and salt and fat. I need it. I really need it, man. I really need it. Hey, my child, calm yourself. Oh. Okay. It's really weird. When you said calm yourself... All my problems just went away, just like that. It's very therapeutic. That's why they call me the magic bear. That's why they call me the magic bear. Zhubidubidum. I accidentally pressed the pause.
pause button so I don't know when I pressed it I generally don't know so I might have been talking for the last 20 minutes and it wasn't recording it which it can only be good news for you or for anyone really doesn't really matter mind you it's quite handy to know that I can pause in midstream yeah I'm not really sure what's on television today or tonight I haven't been watching much television apart from like the uh, Parliament channel with all these mass debates going on about Brexit and stuff like that so I've just been watching them and just yeah I do feel I'm turning into a zombie a little bit zombie 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 <laughs> so what's in your head in your head zombie 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 <laughs> In question time's on. The thing is, question time is a political quote program with politicians. And well done, Andre. Thanks for that. And their questions will all be about what's been happening today and yesterday and the day before with all these mass um, baiting. Mass of oh, debates, these mass debates, and there's been like one every night from Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights. But then they've held all these amendments beforehand, and they all vote on the amendments. And then tonight, there was an amendment on an amendment. Like what? I didn't know what to do. I was very surprised. Even the um, program announcer that was doing a, you know, presenting a TV show on the other side, you know, talking to celebrities and political analysts, and then going back to the House of Commons for the results. Even they couldn't believe it. It's like, how can you have an amendment on an amendment? That's just complicated. But when you get a dog for the first time, they don't do anything. You know, they're they're funny and they're running around, but they don't they don't do the things that you see Lassie do or Flipper. Admittedly, Flipper is a dolphin, so that's really not a good idea. But Flipper was the dolphin version of Lassie. Bit of a busy bozzy, though, really, wasn't he, Flipper? Always getting into people's business. Didn't really... There's something a bit wrong with him, I think. Always into people's businesses... And he spent most of his time with a young child, a young boy. And I'll be honest, if I was, if I needed help and I wanted to pass on information about some crime that was taking place, it'd be better just to call the police or something, wouldn't it? Rather than telling a small child.
Yeah, I didn't really do the dogs. I did. I like dogs, but my main memory of Misty was we were all having our dinner, Sunday lunch. My stepmom, my first stepmom, she actually and my second stepmom, beautiful cooks, brilliant, both of them, brilliant cooks, and we every Sunday pretty much would have a nice cooked dinner. It was lovely. And I think on this occasion we had a big, I think it might have been like a big chocolate cake in the middle of the table to entice us to finish our main course. It was like a ghetto, I think it was a ghetto, big chocolate and cherry ghetto. Bearing in mind there was, what, how many of us was there? As me, him, him, him. So I had three brothers and me, so that's four. And there was the two parents, so that's six people. And then we had Misty, the ever growing St. Bernard running around. And like all of us, humans and animals alike, we all have our little comfort. They call it a blankie, don't they? A blanket or a blankie. We've all got the equivalent of that, whether it's uh, something that we like that feels comfortable. Dogs have it. All animals. Andre's got... Basically, for him, it's a, it's a slipper. And it's his bag, and it's something that's got his smell and everything. Well, Misty had... Because she used to... Because she was St. Bernard, she dribbled all the time. So we used to use this towel to wipe her mouth. And she liked the towel and she used to chuck it around and stuff. So on this occasion, she chucked it while we are eating and it landed right on the cake. Or the chocolate ghetto. Landed right over. I mean, it basically covered the entire ghetto with this damp uh, slobbered covered towel I think it was blue or blue and white and my dad took the towel off of the ghetto and put it back on the floor or whatever and I just remember trying to eat that ghetto it was it was difficult it was it was like oh I was trying to think, hey, what can I do to get sent to bed without any dinner? What can I do that's, that's going to get me punished? I don't want to go anywhere near that ghetto covered in dribble and slobber from the dog's mouth. Ugh. Yeah, it was very weird. I can't believe how big she got. But I've lived with other dogs. I lived with a... Uh, my friend had a dog. And I lived with him. Twice. And then... Another friend had a dog. And I lived with him. My cousin had a dog. I lived with her. So yeah, that's what... One, two, three, four dogs I've lived with. Any other dogs I've lived with? Four. No, that was it, I think. Four. That's enough, isn't it? So I've lived with four dogs. And they are lovely, but they just constantly want to do go to the toilet. Anyway.
That's my story of dogs. <laughs> so thank you for listening. And hopefully you're not listening anymore and you've just drove, drifted off to sleep through boredom. But if you are actually listening to the whole thing, then it would have been a, a disjoint about 10 minutes ago when I actually print it, accidentally pressed the pause button. Well, never mind though. Hopefully no one noticed. I'm going to go now. See you later.